Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to have everyone here. It's great to be meeting together. It's great not to be wearing masks. And uh, from uh, our dear uh, Premier Gladys Brigadier, I can never say the last name. <laughs> but yeah, we're hopefully, uh, the announcement got made last week, uh, things will be changing at church in terms of how many people can be we can have and how many, um, but the details are still up in the air. We're not going to be able to do anything until uh, at least tomorrow because that's when the public health order changes. But another step that we have is that we've got to wait for our Archbishop and to tell us what we can and can't do. So we wait upon that. But today is as it always has been. So, uh, not just for the last bit, not always has been. But things are changing. But uh, again, can I just ask you, just be patient. Um, things, uh, in terms of what changes and things will happen, we need to do that nice and slowly. Um, it is coming up to uh, Christmas and then uh, New Year, uh, and then we start a new year not long from here. So uh, please, again, continue to be flexible, and as you have been, and it's been wonderful. Um, and it's also good that we're doing this together. But it's great being here today. We're uh, on our next Advent Carol series, and we've got a new uh, carol that I, I'll tell you, I haven't heard before until I got asked to preach on it. <laughs> but uh, but it's, no, it's actually a good, a good carol. But let me pray, and then we're going to uh, uh, sing the carol. We can't sing yet. You're going to hum to yourself. Um, we're going to be singing, we're going to be praying, hearing God's word, seeing what God's mission is like, and uh, lots of good things. So let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you have gathered us. Thank you that uh, we can all be here, and we thank you for those people at home who are joining us either live now on Zoom or uh, later on, on YouTube. But Lord, we thank you that you are a God that do provide and that we uh, owe you everything. Help us today as your people uh, worship you in our words and in our hearts. Amen. Okay, the hymn, that, uh, the carol that we're going to be uh, looking at today is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Thank you, Ray. Do people know that one as a carol? Okay. Well known. <laughs> well known. <laughs> I'm too young. <laughs> Friends, we've got lots of great things to be thankful for. And I think as people of God, let's together say this prayer of thanksgiving together. Together. Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you humble and heartfelt thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. 
We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray and give such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be truly thankful and that we may praise you not only with our lips but in our lives, serving you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Friends, uh, before we click on to the next slide, a few things have happened. First of all, Tim is not here, as you can see. Tim, Anna and Toby got married uh, last night. Um, the little report I got, apparently everybody's happy. So I, I, no one's told me otherwise. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that happened yesterday. So Tim's, uh, Tim's actually, Tim and Kathy are going to be away this week. They've gone down the coast, but they're only, uh, they're only uh, they're going to Jerengong, so it's only an hour and a half away. On the other hand, I'm going away as well, but I'm going to be ten hours away. So who are you going to call? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> and I probably won't have any reception. So, so yeah. So friend uh, Shane Edwards who. Goes the evening service and I are going out to Lake Mungo to see what's out there. Oh, the, the Mungo man's out there, but we'll. <laughs> okay, um, so th that's the thing. Um, during this week, um, our dear sister Elsie Middleton went home to our Lord. Those, that, yeah, many people know Elsie. Elsie's been amongst this uh, part of this church for a long time. One of the greatest stories I heard is that. After her husband died, when Elsie was in her late 50s, early 60s, the church needed a piano player. So what did she do? She went and learned to play the piano. And she, when I first met her, she was playing piano for the seniors, uh, super seniors, and, and that was real. And she was a lovely lady. I'll be praying for her and her family in prayers, but just to let you know, um, the funeral is going to be here at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. And Paul James is going to be taking that because Tim and I are so far away. So, um, so if you know her. Um, the other person who I didn't know, but Tom's let me know, Pat Lynch, uh, a, a gentleman that used to belong to this church, he also passed away this week. So, and again, we're, these two are Christian people. We don't mourn like the pagans do. We have hope and we will see them again in, in glory. Okay, uh, slide please. Community carols. Yes, we've been calling commando carols because I called it that because I don't know whether we're allowed to do it. But with all the changes, we can now. What we're going to do, we're going to go to four people's houses and you can see them up there. Ben and Jane, who's in Carhill Street. Susanna and Steve at Roselands. Nathan's at uh, Hurstville and Licken... Uh, Nick and Leah's place at Bexley. The plan is that we will play uh, seven carols at each place and we stand in their front yard and we'll sing to the street. For you guys, come to whichever one you want to or you could come to all of them and be part of the crowd as we go. Um, so it, it's in that order. The leaflet's up the back, but the other thing up the back is also... If you're going to choose, can you just let us um, indicate which one you most likely will go to, um, just so that we can see um, if we need to bolster one house more than another, we can do that. But again, if you, again, it's, a, it's going to be a long day because it's uh, 4.30 to almost 8 o'clock. But if you can come to all of them, please do. It'll be good fun. And you can sing, and we can sing now because we're going, we've got the, we'll have words and we can encourage people to sing. Okay, next one, Christmas services, Christmas Eve, uh, carols and readings, uh, that's at 11pm uh, here, and then Christmas Day, it's 9.30, is that, uh, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock here, and it's also going to be communion, so just as two services over uh, the Christmas services. 
our fonts change. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, up the back, we've just had a weekend away, which I'm going to show you a video of, of all the fun that we had in a moment. But the reason why we had that week away and were so low key is that because we wanted to check out the place and see what it's going to be like in January. At the end of January, we want to have a house party as a church. Um, the accommodations are good. Um, talk to the Humphreys and the Burgesses or the Von Hubens, they all went, myself and the Milton Halls. I'm going to tell you about the accommodation and how, even though it was record level <laughs> uh, heat, it was still a good weekend because of the fellowship that we had. Um, but there's a sign-up sheet for the 29th and 31st of January. And the other thing we hope to do at that uh, house party is actually kick off next year in the right way. Okay, we had a great time and I want to show you how good a time we had. Thank you. <laughs>
publishing, they're going to schools and universities to say that, hey, the Bible is really worth reading. Why don't you read it with me? So these are some of the things that they do. If we could have the next slide, please. Um, so you can see um, some of the areas that they're working in currently at the moment in their projects. And if you'd like to find out more, you can have a look at the link, which is www.biblesociety.org.au. And um, you can also subscribe to their digital um, newsletter or magazine, um, the Bible Society magazine, which used to be the SOA. Or you can, if you don't have the computer, you can ask someone who has a computer to subscribe you to have um, them sent by mail as well. So the next slide will show you some of the ways we can be praying for the Bible Society. I won't go through them. You can just have a little read. Thank you. Let me uh, pray for the Bible Society now. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Bible Society. We thank you that uh, so for so many years they've um, worked hard and tirelessly to get your word into people's hands, get your word into other languages so that uh, your word is available to all. And we thank you for that, for we know that it is your word that saves. So, Lord, we continue to pray that just the Bible Society continue uh, to function but also, Lord, pray for those that lead it, that you continue, uh, that they continue their mission in keeping faithful to you and to your word. Amen. Amen. Okay, we come to a time when we're going to hear God's word read, and Irene's going to do read and read for us. And oh, so Susanna's going to read the first one, and then Irene's going to read the so Isaiah thirty-five. Susanna's going to read, then Irene's going to read. Uh, one John, and then I'll speak. Thank you. Okay, let's read the Bible together. So the first reading is from Isaiah 35. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendour of Carmel and Sharon they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendour of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, and thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where the jackals once lay, grass and reed and papyrus will grow, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk on there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and the sorrow and sighing will flee away. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading will be from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. So commencing at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. 
the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Um, Jeff, can I get you to go back to the first song and get the first verse up for us? And while it's Jeff doing that, let me pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for your word and that your word uh, can be spoken, your word can be sung. And, uh, and at this time, as we celebrate Christmas, keep on reminding us of the great things you've done uh, for us through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Lots of you guys know this, uh, Carol. I didn't. I didn't think that was a, that common. The tune is common. And apparently there's a couple of tunes as well, isn't there, that it gets sung on. So I had to do a little bit of research. This is what I found out. It was penned by Charles Wesley, okay? A Church of England vicar in 1744. Charles Wesley is also the younger brother of John Wesley, the, starter, the, the person that started the Methodist movement that became the Uniting Church, it was our most closest thing now. Um, and Charles Wesley wrote 6,000 hymns, or around that. And a lot of them are sung today, still. And us younger people are re-singing them, jazzier tunes, but we are singing the same words. And this uh, carol that's behind me, started as a prayer and it was inspired by Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 that says this, I will shake all nations and the desires of all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. Charles Wesley, when he wrote this prayer, was praying that God will shake the world and that God will be desired by all nations. The reason uh, Charles Wesley was praying this, because in 1744 England, the Industrial Revolution had started. People left the land and came into cities. And what Wesley saw, is actually summed up in a Midnight Oil song, that says, the rich getting richer, the poor get the picture. Due to the class structure of England, the rich were exploiting the poor. And Charles Wesley saw that. And what else really disturbed Charles Wesley when, it, when he saw child labour? Children as young as four were being made to clean chimneys, made to work in factories. Charles Dickens called these factories the satanic mills. Children were made to work long hours for very little pay. And some factories went to orphanages and got children. And guess what their wage was? Food and board. Just to give you a perspective of how bad it was, a few decades past the writing of this uh, carol, these laws were made, and these laws were seen to be uh, progressive and protective and good. 
And if we were living in England and we loved children, we were going, yay, for these laws. But listen to these laws. There was three of them. Um, yeah, the first one, okay, let, let me just quote from what I've written. The three laws which was most impact the employment of children in the textile industry were the Cotton Factories Regulations Act in 1819, which set the minimum working age at nine and the maximum working hours at 12. That's 1819. In 1833, there's a regulation of uh, child labour law, which established paid inspectors and enforced the laws. That's over 20 years. These laws existed, but they weren't upheld. And in 1847, the 10-hour bill was passed, which limit working hours to 10 hours for children and women. See, as Charles Wesley saw the society that he was living in and he was seeing the explo exploitation of the poor, the orphans and the powerless, and that's why he wrote this prayer. And the prayer starts with, Come, thou long-expected Jesus. Does that sound familiar to us? I hope so, because we've just been just finish our series in the Revelation. And don't, what do we cry out when we see our world, when we see the evil and the injustices? We cry out, come, Lord Jesus, come. With the same sentiment, Charles Wesley wrote this prayer, which turned into a hymn, which then became a carol. I think what I enjoyed most about this carol, especially when, as I looked at it and, and looked more about it, because it does celebrate Jesus coming into the world at the first Christmas, but it also makes us long, wait and long for the day that Jesus comes again. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free, from our fears and sins release us, let find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Come, thou long expected Jesus, was the hope of God's people, the nation of Israel. That's at the first Christmas. We know the nation of Israel we, it's good, we actually did the series in Exodus where God rescued his people from Egypt. Out of the whole world, he chose this group to be able to be his people. But as you know, as the Old Testament rolled along, we saw that Israel wasn't faithful. Israel started worshipping other gods. Judgment came. God's people were exiled. The temple got destroyed. The second temple got built, but it's not quite the same. And if you were a faithful Israelite just before Jesus was born and you saw what was happening to your nation, you saw the injustice, you saw that your nation was ruled by the Romans, a foreign power, your religious leaders are corrupt, and worst of all, even though they mentioned God, God was not at the centre of their lives. If you were a faithful Israelite, you would despair and you would be crying out to God, dear God, you promised to send Messiah, please send him. And Jesus came. God did send the Messiah. Jesus came, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee, Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Jesus is the only hope for the Israelites at the first Christmas. Jesus is the only hope for Charles Wesley in 1744 England. 
Jesus is the only hope for us. Here we are, December 2020, post-Christian Australia. And as I listened to this carol a few times, the couple of lines that always got stuck in my throat or that I got just, just disturbed me a little bit was the next two lines. It just clashes with what I know. At the end of this said, Dear desires of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Dear desire of every nation. So I just described Australia as post-Christian. Half of you in this room remember a different time. Back in the 1560s, Australia was known as a Christian nation. So was the US. So was Britain. A lot of Europe. But not now, are we? Even at the most superficial category, you name me a nation that actually is proud to be called a Christian nation. Fiji, maybe? But the bigger nations have become secular. Australia, we call ourselves, in the world stage, we're a secular nation. In other words, what secular really means? Godless. This last line, dear desire of every nation, caught me because when I look at this world, every nation doesn't desire Jesus. And even Israel, when Jesus did arrive for the first time, they didn't acknowledge him. Let alone desire him. But that should not surprise us because we read in 1 John that uh, Irene read to us. In 1 John verse 10 it says, He was in the world, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. The nations do not desire Jesus. Then I realised my mistake. The reason why I got stuck on this verse is because it, it was a mistake. Because Charles Wesley isn't stating a, a truth of what he can see now. That Jesus is the desire of every nation. No, when we read Haggai and the context of Haggai, it's actually a hope it's a prayer of what will come to every nation and will come when every nation, every tribe, every people will stand in front of the throne of Jesus and desire him. But that's not now. It will be. It's a prayer based on a promise of God that God uh, spoke through Haggai and Haggai prophesied that the promise will be fulfilled and the promise is fulfilled in Jesus. Because what we do see is that Jesus does shake the world. Actually shakes the whole world when he arrives. Even though the world does not recognise him or acknowledge him in his but his first coming has shaken the whole world. Second verse, please, Jeff. And when we start the second verse, this is the thing. Regardless whether people desire him or not, Jesus is the Messiah. Born thy people to deliver. In 1 John 10, let me continue reading. He was in the world, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who receive him, 
those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor human decisions or a husband's will, but born of God. Jesus came and gives deliverance to his people. Jesus brings his people back to to God. We can only be saved and set free by Jesus. We keep on reading the, uh, singing the hymn, Born a child, yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy glorious kingdom bring. So in that reading, in 1 John 1, we read this, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. He was with God in the beginning. In verse 3, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And in verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only who come from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus arrived as a baby. And he is God. He is the creator. He is the source of life. And everyone who lives, who has life, owe Jesus thanks and praise and worship. For it is Jesus who created us and sustained us. Jesus who was with God, Jesus who is God, became flesh. And he came to dwell with us, to give us light, to show us God. And he's bringing his kingdom in. How? By rescuing his people. And how does he do this? By coming in flesh. As a child, then growing up to be a man, he lives a life like our lives. He's tempted like we're tempted, but he did not sin. He comes in flesh so that he can actually pay the penalty that we owe. He can, comes in flesh so justice can be done. How can God forgive us if there's a penalty still owing? But through Jesus, God is just in himself. He fulfills righteousness. We can only be delivered because of Jesus. Jesus, our perfect sacrifice, our perfect substitute, he dies that we don't. He bears our, uh, the penalty for his sins, uh, for our sins, because he doesn't have to bear any penalty for his own sins, because he was sinless. Remember, he came as man, because if he came as God, he cannot die. But as a man, he does. And Jesus, who is God and man, his death on the cross is sufficient for all humanity because God is infinite. In the last two lines, by thy own eternal spirit, rule in our hearts alone. Friends, Jesus is king whether we recognise him or not. As we saw in Revelation, the whole world is going to make the bow before him and judgment will come. When he returns, he will judge and he will hand out the final judgment. For all those who do recognise him, we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. We who believe in Jesus, Jesus is our light. He guides us in this darkness. He rules in our hearts by his spirit, changing us and guiding us. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. 
Friends, Jesus is the only man never to deserve the penalty of death. Jesus never disobeyed God. And because Jesus is God, he is of infinite worth. Out of all men, Jesus was perfectly righteous, perfectly faithful. Making him the only person that does not have to face God's anger because God's not angry with him. But on the cross, he dies for us. He bears our sins. And on the cross, he actually satisfies God's anger. It is only what Jesus earned, his merit. It is who he is and it is what he has done for us that can deliver us to God. Let me read from you from Ephesians uh, 1. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ Jesus even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in, in realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in that coming age he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not from yourself, it is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which which is God prepared for us in advance. Friends, this carol, when we sing it, it sings on how good God is, in how good Jesus is. And we celebrate his first coming, but we also long and wait for his return. Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you've done for us in Jesus. Help us to find rest in him. Help us to find peace and joy in Jesus. Even though this world and this The people around us are against you. Please be with your people. And Lord, when it becomes unbearable, let us continue to hope that Jesus will come again and everything will be set right. Amen. Just realise it's one of the things that are bad about me doing everything is that you're going to hear my voice all day. (laughs) But I'm going to um, pray now. Um, I'm going to pray. I'm going to thank God for his goodness. I'm going to thank God for Elsie. I'm going to pray for our church, uh, especially with these changes in the COVID regulations. I'm going to pray for our nation. And finally, I'm going to pray for our suburb and the people around us that Jesus, uh, what, uh, God's word will change people's lives. So please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the creator of the world and the universe. You, through your son, Jesus, created all things. And you deserve all praise and all glory. And we thank you so much that you're so good to us that even though we're undeserving, you sent Jesus to save us. Even though we didn't want to be saved, you did. Why? Because you love us and you are creating a people for yourself. So we thank you so much for your grace. Thank you so much for your mercy. And thank you that Jesus came. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Elsie. We thank you for her life, her life serving you. We thank you that to her last days, she longed to be with you and she was confident and assured because of Jesus that she will be with you. Lord, we who are left behind, I just pray that we learn from Elsie's uh, endurance and her hard work here on earth, reading your word, singing your praises, fellowshipping with these people. Lord, we thank you for her. Lord, we pray for the family of Elsie's family, her children and the grandchildren. Lord, you know that some of them don't believe, uh, believe in you. I just pray that as they come to your funeral, uh, to Elsie's funeral, that as they hear the promises that you made to Elsie and which she believed is uh, made again, may they hear with new ears, see with new eyes and believe with a new heart that only you can give. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that there are changing of the law, especially with the COVID um, restrictions that we've been in, uh, put on upon us. Lord, just pray for us as a church that as we adopt them, we pray for Glenn Davis, our Archbishop, give him wisdom and those that are around him to make the right choices for the good of your people, for the good of your gospel and for the good of the communities around us. Lord, I pray that that this is the start when we can again gather people, when we can sing praises to your name and that we can call people to meet. So Lord, just ask that you be with us, be with Tim as well as he thinks hard about this as well. Give them wisdom to do the right thing. And dear Heavenly Father, I pray for our nation. Lord, I pray for Scott Morrison. Lord, I just pray that you uh, be with him as he deals with many, many things, not only on our shores but overseas. Lord, again, uh, give him wisdom. Uh, surround him with people who are good counsel. And Lord, again, I pray that our, our government will be there for the good of your people for good of the people of Australia and that they do not think of themselves. And Lord, we also think of Gladys Bridgerian uh, here in New South Wales. Lord, again, I pray for her and her government as she's making choices that affects us. Uh, help her to lead well. Help her to do her job well, and not only her, but her whole government. And for both oppositions and for all people within politics. Lord, I pray that we are a country that can speak truths to one another, that we can be a country where we can disagree and yet not have to kill each other and draw blood. I pray that, that we are enlightened enough where we know that we cannot all agree on everything but what we can agree on is that we can compromise for one another. But Lord, I just yeah, give you our government here in Australia and I pray that you look after us. And finally, Heavenly Father, I pray for all the people in the surrounding areas of our, our church and our homes that don't know you, for all the people that we come in contact with, or those people that if left to their state they're in, when you come again, you're going to cast them to that fiery lake. But Lord, give us opportunities to speak the good news of your coming of your son to them. Help us to speak your grace to them. Help us to speak and warn them of the dangers of your anger. 
But most importantly, Lord, teach us how to love them. Help us to love people so that our, our, our heart aches for them. Amen. Friends, we're going to finish with next week's uh, carol. There's also a great uh, carol to end today with. Thank you, Jeff. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sound. Friends, that comes, uh, comes, come, we've come to the end of the formal part. There is morning tea up the back. Again, can I just warn you, keep distancing. And also when we're touching stuff, make sure that we don't touch things multiple times by multiple people. Okay? All those regulations are still happening. So please, when you do that, please. But enjoy a cup of tea. Have good conversations with one another. And let me pray for us now. Dear Heavenly Father, as we leave here today, may we be people who are, are full of hope, knowing that you will return, knowing that you are working in the world now, changing people's lives. Lord, help us uh, this week to be good ambassadors for you and let us all bring glory to you in what we do and say this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends. Enjoy. I won't be here next week. Tim will be. Um, any changes and things listen uh, might be in the newsletter. Next week might not be a lot of changes, but things will change as, uh, as we know. Okay, please stay flexible. Okay, let's enjoy a cup together.